Now, the report was produced by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. She was the round the world yachtswoman who now promotes the idea that the economy should be circular, with goods recycled round and round, not flowing in a straight line into a landfill. Uh, contributors to the report included McKinsey, the consultants, and many clothing businesses, including Stella McCartney's. Well, just before the official launch early this evening, I went to the fashion gallery at the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum to talk to Ellen MacArthur and Stella McCartney herself. First, I asked Ellen if we should blame the waste of textile materials on the very nature of fashion. I think the, the disposable nature of fashion is one of the challenges. Um, but I think the other challenge is to try and make that, that fashion that changes by definition fit within a system. And that's what this report is all about. It's about building a broader system within which all products fit the design of the products, the materials that they use, so that when they come out of the, fa the, the far end as fast fashion, that material can be valorised, either as something which is technical, like a plastic, or as something that biodegrades and can feed back into the, you know, the biosphere. Stella, do you worry that if we did this right, if we were really kind of more eco-friendly in the way we dress, you, you, you might end up out of a job because you'd, you'd design one piece of clothing and instead of us changing it, we would wear it for 20 years and then we wouldn't need as many of, as many of you. <laughs> uh, no, obviously I don't worry about that. <laughs> I mean, my business model is based on, on sustainability and I have a successful business. Um, I think what we're looking at here in this report is actually working together and looking at all levels of the fashion industry and creating new business out of it and looking at the waste, essentially, which is what we're talking about and finding a way of reusing it and making it exciting, actually, to not look at it as a problem all the time. I think to look at it as an opportunity. There's a 500 billion US dollar opportunity if we can get this right, if we can keep that fashion cycling for longer, if we can recover that material. 100 billion US dollars of material isn't recycled every year, which is value. That's value to yeah. the economy, that's value to the fashion industry. Can you build and persuade people that durability is an attractive feature? You know, if we're burning the equivalent of one truckload of clothing every second or using it as landfill, there's nothing attractive about that. I think at the end of the day, we're all living on this planet together and we have to survive on it, you know, and this is a really harmful industry and it doesn't have to be. It's not a quick fix, but, you know, I think what we're talking about today is just bringing awareness to it, a different mindset, a different approach. Although it's rarely seen here, in China, for example, there's a company called Y Closet which has five million subscribers who pay every month to have access to whatever clothing they want. They get their clothing through an app. When they get a new piece of clothing, the old one goes back. So Once it's rental, you, clothes rental. It's basically. effectively rental, but that, that clothing goes back into the system. Now, if that's something which has durability, that may well go out to someone else. Maybe it won't, but once you build that system whereby the clothing goes back, they know what it's made of. They know how to valorise it. It's also a new way of looking at the fashion industry. I mean, I think all industries right now have to review their impact on the planet and the fact we're here today talking about the fashion industry, but this applies to every industry. Well, I was going to say huge. this. It applies to everything. Yeah, You've just discovered everything. the critique of it, modern consumption. It applies to everything, and the reality is there are really exciting alternatives. You know, there's a company called Real Real that basically, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, it has a second life. My clothes are on there, and you can buy them, you know, you can sort of buy and swap and barter clothing and it Am it's I alone in being a bit sceptical of the sort of rental model? I think you're just being a bit old-fashioned, No, but rental clothes, I mean, I, I like no, my own clothes. I don't want to wear what? someone it's, else's. It's a modern approach because in order to have a future, to even have this conversation for our children and our children's children, you're, we're going to have to have these conversations. We won't have a planet to live on if we don't. What, what would be your advice, the two of you, to an average consumer who likes spending a bit of money on clothes and dressing well and sees dressing as a form of self-expression, as part of their identity and the way they behave. What, what should they change in the way they live their life? Right now, a consumer, let's take in this country, cannot be circular with their fashion de decisions. It's very hard to, and that's because the industry isn't circular. And what we're trying to do with this report is to get the industry to look at this vision, to have a higher level of ambition, a much higher level of ambition than yeah. it's had in the past, and to collaborate like never before. And incentivise people, you know. The reality is, is this doesn't have to be punishment. This can be sexy, this can be fashionable, this can be mm. young, you know. Mm. For me, I get excited about the opportunities because I find it new. And I think as a fashion designer and as a businesswoman, that's why I'm here today, is because I'm interested in newness. Mm -hmm. And this what, is a new approach. What you didn't put in the report, you didn't think about taxing them, for example. So people just won't buy as many of them because 
and they will value what they've got because they'll be paying more for them. It was it, it's a valid point, but I don't think just taxing clothing solves this problem. The clothing currently is designed in a linear way. Uh, we burn a significant amount of it or landfill a significant amount. What we need to do is design a system so it's restorative and regenerative. Well, I've punished right. people. Actually, look at the opportunities financially. It's a massive opportunity to make more money on every level for everybody. You know, if there's so much waste, get recycling incentives mm -hmm. in place where people are actually going to get money for going and recycling their clothes properly. There's 100 billion US dollars to be had in mm -hmm. that industry. Tell me, we're about to enter, I suspect, Stella, you will have views on this, I think, a frenzied speculation about what Meghan Markle is going to wear at a wedding next May when she marries Prince Harry. Is it healthy that we're so obsessed with the dress. As a race, as animals on this planet, we're kind of obsessed with very strange things. Now, it's all allowed. It's okay. You know, some people are obsessed. Some people really don't even know who you're talking about right now. So, you know, it's all kind of relative. I think the main thing here is just to sort of bring a new awareness into the conversation. Maybe she should rent the dress, actually. That would, that would make a big statement, wouldn't it? Because yeah. a I wedding mean, dress is only I'm worn. happy to provide some some options, eco, <laughs> eco options. <laughs>